The complex relationship between corrosion and microorganisms has been the topic of research for decades, yet there is still no single definitive test to diagnose this phenomenon. Microbiologically influenced corrosion, or MIC, like any form of corrosion, occurs through a process of initiation and subsequent growth. As a MIC pit grows, the way in which the microorganisms interact with the material and each other can change. This video explores some of the potential changes that may occur as MIC initiates and propagates over time. MIC is broadly defined as corrosion affected by the presence and activity of microorganisms, including bacteria, archaea, and fungi. While microorganisms and biofilms are found everywhere in natural environments and engineered systems, not all corrosion is microbiologically influenced. To manage corrosion in engineered systems such as pipelines, determining the degree of influence microorganisms have on abiotic or non-biological corrosion mechanisms is essential. In order for metal loss to occur through corrosion, a corrosion cell must be present. The corrosion cell includes an anode where oxidation of the metal occurs and a cathode where a reduction reaction occurs. The anode and cathode have an electrical connection through the metal itself, and an electrolyte connecting the two must be present. Supported by these anodic and cathodic reactions, which are influenced by the surrounding environment, metal loss will occur over time. If any part of the corrosion cell is eliminated, corrosion will stop. Metal loss from corrosion can be generalized or localized. Generalized corrosion occurs when tiny anodic and cathodic sites constantly move around the metal surface. A localized corrosion pit forms when an anodic site remains fixed in one spot. For the pit to grow, the environment around the pit must be able to support the continuing corrosion cell reactions. This support can come from chemical or electrochemical conditions, microbiological activities, and physical conditions. MIC is a localized pitting mechanism. Free-floating or planktonic microorganisms have a limited effect on the corrosion of a surface as long as they remain in the fluid and do not attach. However, bacteria and other microorganisms often attach to surfaces to optimize the conditions for their growth and survival. Bacteria attached to a surface can affect corrosion in a number of ways, but helping to fix anodic sites is one major influence of bacteria. Research has shown that attached bacteria in biofilms form anodic sites. However, experiments have also shown that bacteria may attach preferentially to existing anodic sites on the metal surface. While a single cell measuring only a few microns long can cause microscopic corrosion initiation, a single cell is unlikely to have a large effect on corrosion. An accumulation of many cells in a biofilm, however, can have a much stronger influence on localized corrosion. Biofilms containing microorganisms, extracellular polymers, and organic and inorganic materials can promote localized corrosion both actively and passively. Establishment of attached or sessil microorganisms in biofilms introduces the potential for MIC. Biofilms allow microorganisms to establish synergistic metabolic relationships, provide physical stability and protection, and increase access to limited nutrients in the liquid phase. Researchers have observed biofilms exhibiting complex structures that provide protection from shear forces, help remove waste products of metabolism, and provide access to energy sources in the liquid phase and from the metal surface. Biofilms can affect localized corrosion by forming occlusions that promote concentration cells. Biofilms can also fix the position of anodic sites, concentrate acidic species, shift redox potentials, and support charge transfer between anodic and cathodic regions under the biofilm. The potential for MIC is therefore strongly based on the propensity for biofilm establishment and growth. Depending on the physical and chemical conditions in the environment and the microbial consortia supported by those conditions, Microbes can influence corrosion through their metabolic processes, such as sulfate reduction, sulfur oxidation, iron or manganese oxidation, iron reduction, organic acid production, formation of exopolysaccharides, and cathodic depolarization through hydrogen utilization. The biofilm itself can help facilitate these processes. MIC has been shown to initiate under biofilms established for just a few hours. While the initial pits may be microscopic, they can eventually coalesce and create larger pits. MIC initiation may continue as the biofilm grows, or it may change or stop. In some cases, MIC may not initiate until the biofilm reaches a certain state. As the biofilm grows, the sticky polymers surrounding the microorganisms attract and hold solid debris and corrosion products. 
The solid particles provide additional structure to the biofilm and may eventually displace the biological components. At some point in its evolution, a biofilm can reach a semi-stable state. For MIC to continue, mass transport and charge transfer must also be able to continue. These activities can be both actively and passively supported by the biofilm and microorganisms present. As an example of active biofilm involvement in corrosion under anaerobic conditions, both SRB and methanogens can promote cathodic depolarization by hydrogen consumption. SRB uses hydrogen and sulfate to produce sulfide, while methanogens use hydrogen and CO2 or acetate to produce methane. Acetogens in the biofilm may contribute synergistically to the cathodic reaction by providing organic carbon in the form of acetate. As long as anodic reaction products are able to be transported away from the pit, localized corrosion can continue. A simple example of passive biofilm involvement in local pitting is an ion concentration cell. In a chloride-containing environment, the occlusion formed by the biofilm naturally promotes a difference in the chloride concentration in the electrolyte under the deposit versus the solution outside the deposit. Chloride ions migrate to the anode to neutralize any buildup of charge and result in a lower pH under the occlusion. The occlusion may also trap and concentrate acid species generated by microbial metabolism, increasing corrosion. As corrosion continues over time, the relationship between biofilm, microbiological activity, and deposits becomes more complex. Thick deposits may impede ion transport or provide protective micro-niches suitable for the growth of specific organisms. The relationship between mature biofilms and MIC is not well understood. In thick deposits, microorganisms may be present simply as part of the solid material that settles out of the fluid stream. Different microbes have been found at different depths in thick deposits. The question is whether they're actively supporting corrosion or simply representative of history as different layers of debris deposited during different operating conditions. Some investigators have shown higher numbers of hydrogen utilizing microbes deep in the deposit near the corroding metal and more acid producing bacteria closer to the deposit liquid interface. This finding suggests that even in thick deposits, microorganisms are distributed in a synergistic manner and promote corrosion. Clearly, there's still much to learn about biofilms and corrosion in the years to come. We have seen that MIC is a complex phenomenon and that microorganisms can influence corrosion in a multitude of ways. MIC pitting occurs over time and the role that bacteria have in corrosion may change over time. Microorganisms can promote both initiation and propagation of corrosion. Biofilms can support corrosion both passively and actively. And even within thick deposits, microorganisms can be distributed in a way that promotes corrosion. For corrosion investigators, the roles of bacteria in pit initiation, propagation, and growth, and the influences of abiotic corrosion mechanisms must all be considered. There may be different degrees of microbial involvement in corrosion at different times relative to pit growth. The extent of microbial involvement in corrosion can change with variations in the environment, and MIC may coexist with abiotic corrosion mechanisms, such as oxygen corrosion or under-deposit corrosion. Therefore, the potential influence of microorganisms on corrosion is ultimately more of a continuing spectrum than an absolute condition called MIC. In diagnosing MIC, one could ask, if microorganisms were absent, would corrosion cease to be a problem? Yet in reality, microorganisms exist nearly everywhere, from beneath the Antarctic ice cap to boiling thermal vents on the seafloor. Therefore, the potential for microbial contribution to corrosion is nearly ubiquitous. Continuing to improve our understanding of specific microorganisms, their relationship between each other and the environment, and their involvement in the corrosion process will help answer some questions, and yet certainly raise many others. Pursuing this knowledge is essential to establishing better MIC management programs for industry. Driven by our purpose of safeguarding life, property, and the environment, DNV enables organizations to advance the safety and sustainability of their business. Operating in more than 100 countries, our 16,000 professionals are dedicated to helping our customers in the maritime, oil and gas, energy, and other industries to make the world safer, smarter, and greener.